people and start letting people. Oh, wow. That's new. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. Have you? Yeah, that's new to me too. Okay. So I'll admit people and I'm going to mute myself and I'll let you know. I mean, I'll let you see. Getting messages from Morgan George and Anders saying, we're waiting for them to let us in. It's invitation only. Um, are they VIPs? Huh? Are they VIPs? Whips. <laughs> Whips. <laughs> hey, Christina, how's it going? Bill just said, how are you, you doing? Um, she's going to do the dishes. I'm so interested oh, okay. in your presentation. She's so interested in what we have to say. <laughs> Good that, luck. Thank you. Is that Bobby George? Oh my God. How you doing, John? You, Good to see you. You look like some sort of drug dealer from Los Angeles in the 1980s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gotten uh, Sonny Bono a lot recently. Oh, Sonny man. Bono? Okay. <laughs> oh, Bono, my apologies. <laughs> How's law school? It, it's going. I'm, I'm yeah. keeping, up. keeping up. Thanks for asking. Good stuff. How you doing, Bobby? Good to see you, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Bill. I'm I'm psyched to be here. Uh, your your book uh, comes to mind tomorrow. I'm I'm very excited. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks for getting it, Bobby. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're gonna just let uh, let the let everyone get into the room, and we'll start the the event in about two minutes. Uh, so everyone get settled, and thanks for being here. Thank you, Javier. Yeah, I'm really uh, excited. Yeah, thanks for hey, having me. How's it going? Thanks a lot, Javier. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this. This is, this is great. Really excited about it. Yeah. Bill, we met a long, a million years ago. I used to manage City Lit, and we did your uh, yeah. launch for the old neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, was, that was, those were fun years back when City Lit was first starting up and everything. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. They, they closed, but they just opened back. They're going to open up again. Wow. They closed in December, but they're going to open up again. Hey, Andrew. June, I think. So. That's great. Hey, guys. Hey, what's going on, Andrew? Here we are, the big day. I can't wait. Did, <laughs> I, did I just see Bobby George on the video? Yeah, yeah he's there. <laughs> Taking a break from law school. I like it. <laughs> How's it going, Andrew? It's going good. I, I'm just so happy for you both. Um, you know, the, the one, the one book I have read was Bacchanalia, obviously my, my favorite go-to Fiesta book. Um, that's for sure. Can't wait to read your, read your book this weekend, Bill. I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing what you think. It's a great book, actually. You're going to love it because he just gives such detailed descriptions of all the various runs that he went into and everything. Yeah. Also, there was this group of really nasty British folk who were trying to sort of, you know, <laughs> rain on his parade. But we're going to find out tonight whether he ever punched any of them. No, no. Never did. I think I may know who he's talking about. Maybe not. But just to protect yeah. the innocent, I won't say anything. I didn't put, I didn't put, I removed all names of, of the villains. To protect the innocent. You they're, know. they're anonymous villains. Dun, 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 dun. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> I think we're going to get started here. Uh, we are recording this, by the way. Um, okay. We're here tonight to celebrate the release of Bill Hillman's new book, The Pueblos, which congratulations, <clears throat> Bill, came out yesterday. Um, Thanks so much. About the culture of bulls in Spain and has appeared on BBC, World Service, NPR, Vice, The Washington Post, and many others. He is also the author of The Old Neighborhood, and Mozos, and is currently working on his PhD in teaching writing at the University of Louisiana. Bill will be in conversation with John Hemingway, who is a novelist and journalist. He published his first novel, Bacchanalia, a Pamplona story in 2019, and his family memoir, Strange Tribe, in 2007. He has also published short stories in literary journals and magazines such as Provincetown Arts and the Saturday Evening Post. John currently lives in Montreal with his wife, Christina, and their Black Labrador, Hugo. You can purchase books by Bill and John through the links in the chat or go to exileandbookbill.com. Uh, we encourage you in the audience to keep your cameras on, but mute yourselves to the Q&A portion of the program. You can use the raise your hand function 
or type your questions into the chat and John will pass them along to Bill. Thank you both for being here tonight. And for those of you that are tuning in, this is our second event in our new, new space, new to us space. So uh, thanks everyone for, for being here. Uh, please enjoy the show and take it away, John. Right. Yeah, um, thanks for inviting me. Um, this was very unexpected, but it's quite an honor because I've known Bill for, oof, since about 2010, maybe? Around there, yeah. I think that, yeah, uh, over a decade now. We met in Pamplona, and then Bill invited me to a story slam in Chicago, and then to another one in Edinburgh, and um, we've been friends ever since then. Uh, he is a great runner, okay? I am not. I have actually been down there 17 times, but I wouldn't call what I do anything comparable to what this young man has done. Uh, it's, it's amazing, actually. His book is fantastic. If you have any sort of interest in uh, running with the bulls or enciados, as they call them in Spain, uh, not just Pamplona or the uh, Fiesta de San Fermín, but I mean, in Spain, there are hundreds of them, literally, okay, in August, mostly. And he had this goal to run at least 101 of them. Now, Bill tells me he stopped counting at over 200, okay? Mm -hmm. He was there for about three months. Mm -hmm. And it is amazing some of the stuff that he, he writes about the various uh, fiestas, some of them big, some of them extremely small. There was even one town that he went to that he didn't even know the name of it. It was at mm -hmm. night, I think. You know? <laughs> he ran that one too. And the people there were very sort of happy to see anyone come in, you know? Uh, he was just like this. Young guy, okay, he happens to be from America. Some of them didn't even know because he speaks fluent Spanish, you know. It's just, well, he's got a weird accent. Maybe he's from South America or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> or Cuban. <laughs> better. Um, now, why am I here apart from meeting him there? It's because I wrote a book which um, is, is very different from Bill's in the sense that it's a novel, okay, and I was very reticent uh, about writing anything that might have to do with Pamplona because my grandfather, Ernest Hemingway, uh, wrote Fiesta, or The Sun Also Rises, as it's uh, called in the US. And uh, for many years, I just sort of stayed away from that. But then I thought, well, why not? You know, I mean, I've been there. Uh, I love the Fiesta. I know the vibe and everything else. And I thought, I'll do a modern take on this, you know? And it's set in present day, this is before the pandemic, you know? And it follows a group of young expatriates. Uh, I'd say probably one of the principal characters in the book is uh, based on Bill. Okay? <laughs> His name is Hector. I have him as a sort of a Chicano, okay? Who's um, basically trying to become a shaman also. Okay, and he sees communing with the bulls as something which will bring him to a higher level of understanding. And of course, he knows that uh, the bulls, uh, the fighting bulls, are descendants of the of the Auroch, Okay, which were the ancient bulls that you see on the the caves of Lascaux and Altamira. And the Enciero is basically the hunt. And it's the beginning of European art, okay? So there's, there's this sort of mystical quality in it. Uh, a young man who is from Los Angeles, uh, actually no, San Diego in the book, and he's going there and he's uh, with this Italian-American friend, okay? And the two of them are partying, uh, chasing after the same woman, uh, getting royally drunk all the time. Um, and then also running, okay? But of course, the American from San Diego is nothing like Hector. Hector is just incredible, okay, as an American there. Uh, I should say, and this is from Bill's book, that the best runners are Spanish because it is their culture and they practice it uh, much more than say the British or the Americans or the Aussies do. They do things like what Bill did, which is, you know, 
running hundreds, literally, of these enciados in the summer. And so they, they can almost speak with the bulls. They, he, he kept talking about one of them in particular. How is his name pronounced, Bill? Aitor? Oh, Aitor. Aitor, yeah. He basically Aitor, has baby. this ability to calm the animals, to, to lead them, literally. And we're talking about bulls, okay? The, the Toro Bravo, okay, in, in, uh, in Spain, which is fundamentally a wild animal. It's only at the end of its life when they're taking it to the rings and everything for uh, the corrida that they, in many cases, come in contact with people. Uh, think about something, you know, which was descended from these prehistoric bulls and uh, they weigh anywhere from, uh, I suppose we should use pounds here, uh, in kilos, it's something like from 500 to 750. So we're talking about close to a thousand, what, 500, uh, pounds sometimes yeah. uh, when we're talking with yeah. the Miura, I mean, if you talk about the really big ones, okay. Yeah. And um, so I was quite excited to, to get Bill's book because it reminds me uh, of all the kind of excitement that I saw in Pamplona. I've never been to the other in Seattle and I found this very interesting too. But more than that, Bill is doing this to uh, familiarize uh, Anglo-Saxon readers with Spanish culture because bullfighting uh, or corrida and uh, running with the bulls or in Sierra is, is something which uh, these um, people in many regions in Spain grow up with, uh, aspire, you know, to, to do themselves when they, you know, come of age to become bullfighters or to become runners or even those uh, who are involved with kind of acrobatics for the bulls. What are those ones called again, Bill? They call them ricortadores. Ricortadores, yes. They do these somersaults over the horns and things like that. Amazing stuff, you know. It's, it's an amazing culture and it's, it's fascinating and it has very, very deep roots in Spain. And Bill and I admire this. Uh, we love Spain. Uh, we love going there. And that's why we're here tonight to talk about this sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bill, um, how does it feel to have written this book and wow. to have gone there and done all of these encierros? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm really in love with this thing. Uh, I got uh, Paula, my my, uh, my fiance. She uh, she brought it to me the other day, and uh, to to the, she picked it up. She I didn't know it was here. It had been it was sitting outside, and uh, I just the the, the way that uh, that Jerry had torn his books, put it together, and laid it out. I mean, I love it. I love it. I'm in love with this book. Even just like the texture of it, everything. So I wanted to say a quick thank you to Jerry and Tortoise. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, it, it's been like a long, it's been a long journey getting this book uh, finished. And, and I mean, the, just the, the experience of running that whole summer was, was, was a long journey. And, uh, you know, it, it feels great. You know, I'm, I'm reading through it. I haven't looked at it uh, in like a year or so since I last sent it in. And I'm um, looking through it and just like, wow, like this is this is really uh, this is what I wanted, you know. I feel like uh, I feel very satisfied with the with the project and uh, and excited about it and sharing it with people has been has been wonderful so far. Bill, when was the first time that you went to Pamplona? My first time was 2005. Uh, 2005, so a couple years before I went there. And why yeah. did you go? I went uh, all because of Ernest Hemingway, The Sun Also Rises. It uh, it made me wanna wanna run with the bulls, and it made me wanna uh, write. And so I so I went out there and uh, did everything you could do wrong. You know, I showed up without reservations. I, I had to sleep in the streets. I got pickpocketed. Um, I, uh, I I got kicked off the course uh, twice. Uh, I did everything wrong you can do. I was a typical dumb tourist American when I first got there. Uh, but uh, I, I finally did get to run, and that experience was was uh, obviously very impactful, and uh, it was it was it was incredible. Seeing the bulls in the street was was unbelievable. You know, it's interesting. I asked him this because, yeah, I, I found that out in the book. I didn't know that uh, Bill was as much a fan of my grandfather as he is. Okay, yeah, I knew that he liked bulls. I know that he's a writer, but. He never mentioned anything, you know, to me at least. Okay. And then I read in the book and I'm like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is serious here, folks. This is the real deal. And um, more than that, uh, Bill and I have other things in common. Okay. Uh, as I 
knew before, but you will find out reading the book. Bill is bipolar and um, he probably didn't know this at first as enough, a lot of people don't, okay? And that can be very destructive. At one point, you know, he was drinking heavily. I say this, uh, I am very familiar with bipolar people. My dad was bipolar. Um, my grandfather in Ms. Hemingway suffered from clinical depression. He used to call them uh, his black ass periods. And Bill lucked out in many ways going there to Pamplona. I don't know if it was uh, the spirit of Ernest who was looking over him, but the focus that he found in becoming a bull runner or a mozo, as they say in, uh, in Spanish, has helped him to overcome the drinking. He got off that, you know, because it affected the, the medication that uh, you need to take with. I mean, being bipolar is a gift, I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when you are, let's say, mildly sort of, you know, mad, when you're not in the depressive phases, everything comes to you. Everything mm -hmm. makes sense. There are connections like mm -hmm. anyone who isn't that cannot understand. I am not that. Um, yeah, I like to say I dodged a bullet, but mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of those bullets in my family, believe me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it, it's a gift too, because and a lot of creative people, a lot of writers you'll find uh, are bipolar and uh, they just know how to, they have to, you know, know how to deal with it. And there needs to be a certain discipline. There needs to be something that is a discipline. He has two disciplines, writing and bulls. Mm -hmm. And they're complementary, I would say, because mm -hmm. the, the bulls give him that uh, ability to sort of, you know, come into contact with nature in its raw form. Mm -hmm. And the writing is something that he can use to elaborate his experiences there and to expand that to many other areas of his life. I, I find it uh, quite the feat that he was able to overcome this and get to this point and to write this book and others which are uh, worthwhile and uh, very much worth reading too. And uh, proud of Bill. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yeah, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been it's been a journey, you know. It's been uh, it's been it's been uh, it's been difficult, you know. Uh, and not having Fiesta right now has been hard on me uh, psychologically as well, you know. Suddenly, like to have two can two Fiestas canceled, it's uh, it's taking a toll on me. I try not to think about it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Believe me, there are a lot of people out there who are uh, as addicted to Fiesta as we are. And mm -hmm. um, well, what did I do? Uh, I wrote a book, you know, about the whole fiesta. Uh, I called it Bacchanalia, and a lot of pu purists there in San Fermin were saying, no, 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 it is not a Bacchanalia. It is, mm -hmm. you know, the fiesta de toros, okay? Something like that. I, said, I know that. But there's another part of it, too, you know. Yeah. And it hasn't changed, essentially, uh, from the time of my grandfather in the 1920s there, I, I, I see. It's still the, the you know uh, a place of excesses, but also uh, of joy, of laughter, uh, of people meeting people. Spontaneity is another key word that you that comes to mind when you think of the fiesta. Mm -hmm. And um, you know you meet you make friends uh, who can be lifelong friends there. You know, and then you see them again next year. You know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know they have an ex expression there, ya falta menos, okay, which means that. Every day is one day less till the next fiesta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, John, I think you would love the, the small fiestas. I think you would love the, the, the pueblos, the going to the little ones. Oh, they're, the way you describe it is 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 amazing. Yeah. They just they're so open, so family-like. You know, they'll they'll mm -hmm. take anyone in, you know, and the old men talking to you and the kids looking up to you and exactly you know, these sort of things. It's it's really great. Yeah, well, that, yeah. that's Spain. I mean, it's just such a wonderful culture, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really hope that soon uh, they're going to open things up there and uh, we'll be able to travel there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully. hopefully. I'm, I still got my fingers crossed for San Sebastian de los Reyes uh, in August. So they're trying to, they're, they're making some moves, trying to uh, 
trying to have fiesta, but they got a few obstacles to get through still. But uh, hopefully they can they can do their, their fiesta and have bulls and everything. I oh, see. So you think you're going there in August? If they if they pass everything, yeah. If they're gonna do it, I'll go for sure. Well, I'm sure that a lot of the smaller ones would be, um, you know, hopefully having hopefully, their fiesta, hopefully the, the small towns and everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for the bigger ones, it's more of a problem, probably, you know, certainly because of the number of people. I mean, a million people a year, at least, I think. No, what am I saying? At any given time, you can have a million people there. Probably right. close to 10, maybe even 13 million pass through Pamplona. You know, mm -hmm. one day uh, excursions, that, yeah. things like that. And then, of course, after uh, when it gets close to the end of it, you have the Bastille Day in France. And all the uh, the French pass come over the border, and then it's like the first day again, except that a lot of mm -hmm. people are speaking French instead of Castellano, <laughs> Spanish, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no. So that, those days, those days are always a little rowdy because everybody's already kind of tired, and then, then the, the French show up and they're all like ready to go, and it's kind of like get out of here, you know. It's like a little bit, a little bit of animosity sometimes with the with the French when they get there. So, Bill, um, what do you think is probably the most difficult thing for Americans to understand about the culture that you've embraced over there in Spain? I think, um, I think people, you know, hmm? uh, it's probably Americans, uh, you know, they, they, what the, their contact with it is usually like a, a three minute news segment on CNN once a year with that, that shows a lot of crazy images and people getting hurt. And it talks about, you know, the Americans that were hurt. And that, that's kind of like the, the news cycle. It's like a one or two day thing for Americans. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think they get kind of, a, they get it in their head that it's like a one day event. They get it in their head that it's kind of like a tourist trap for Americans to do something crazy and get hurt. And mm -hmm. that, that's kind of, a, I think that's kind of like their superficial sort of image of it. At least that's what I get from talking to people a lot. And um, so, I mean, I think that the, the the most difficult thing to understand about, especially like San Fermin, is is that you know San Fermin is, is a religious festival. Um, it's a, it's a it's a cultural, deeply complex and old cultural festival um, that you know the run is actually uh, you know the Americans are allowed to run, but that's not really who runs and who who runs seriously and who really knows the run and who who's there to really run seriously and. And that's the the locals, usually the the the, the Navarrans, the uh, and then people from other regions of Spain that 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 go there, and um and try to you know run and, and commune with these animals, and um and, and try to display their culture, you know, and uh, it's a really it's a very it's a very religious experience for a lot of them as well, you know. There's a there's a there's a group prayer that's sung um at the at the idol of of San Fermin, um near the beginning of the course on Santo Domingo. And um, there's also other prayers that happen. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these runners like Juan Pedro Lecona, uh, Aitor Estregui, you know, they're they're very they're very prayerful in the, in the moments before the run, and um, you know, they're very. Some of them are very religious. You know, it's it's a it's a they have they have their own ritual that they that they go about in those in those final moments. And um, I think that that when you you, you, it's a, and that that truth that that real the real core culture of the run and and this 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 adoration that the people have for the bulls that all gets lost in this like cnn three minute news segment you know oh yeah totally uh i, I can see that i think another aspect of the fiestas in in pamplona and maybe not in all of them is the duality between the religious significant of a Catholic saint, but also the partying that goes on, which is the pagan aspect uh, of it. Mm -hmm. you know? And it reminded me of, you know, also being bipolar, okay? You mm -hmm. go back and forth between these periods of mania and depression and trying to get the balance between the two. Mm -hmm. There's a car alarm going off, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. I'm gonna try to get away from it. Okay. <laughs> oh, hold on one second. Oh, there we go. It ended. Okay. We're back. Sorry and yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you about that. What do you think about 
the other side of Pamplona, which is not, I, I write more about this probably in my book than, than I do the running, which is the, shall we say, social activity. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, your your the character party. was very social in the book. Yeah, remember. that's true. That's true. Yes, I always pulling down his pants and everything. Yes, yes. I, I, Pretty I, much. I, that yeah. part. Um, I enjoyed those parts with Hector. They're really great, really fun. It's a fun read. It's, it, it, it's very, very fun and interesting. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, the, 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 the pagan stuff is, is definitely there. I mean, it's there. I mean, really this bull, this bull culture comes from a pagan, it has a pagan origin, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what happened really is that, uh, the Catholic church attempted to, to ban these, these pagan traditions and they were unable to do that. And, and, in, and when they realized they couldn't, they couldn't cut these, these pagan traditions out, they, they just, they just, you know, Christianized them. They just yeah. put a saint. They just they just put a saint on it and, and started to, to to become this like blending of this this pagan and this uh a bit like Christian Catholic sort of a bit like bringing a Christmas tree in, into our home sort of thing. I mean that was directly a, a pagan you know uh, yeah. activity from Germany and I think the Scandinavian countries. Okay, mm -hmm. which they then and calling the solstice you know the birth of Christ that sort of thing. But yeah, there are right. a lot of interesting things regarding that. But, um, but yeah, no, the partying, I mean, for me, you know, the partying, it all came back to, to, to Graham Galloway. Graham Galloway for me was kind of like the, uh, the, the sort of the king of the party when I first started going to Fiesta. Um, he sort of was like the, the circus conductor uh, type character. And uh, I had a lot of crazy adventures with, with him over the years. I mean, you know, Graham, I mean, you, you used to come with us and we would go out and get into a lot of, a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the partying is, is a blast, you know, I still go out and party. I just don't drink, you know, yeah. I just, uh, but I, I still go out, you know, dancing and do a bunch of crazy stuff and uh, enjoy it, you know. It's, um, it's the kind of fiesta where if you don't know how to pace yourself, similar to also running with the bulls, you're going to get clobbered. Okay, because exactly. I've, I've heard from a lot of people who have been there, say, in the early 20s. Uh, I remember this one group of Canadians from Montreal. They were telling me they went there and they were smoking and drinking like there was no tomorrow. Comes the fourth day, they wake up. One looks to the other and says, we got to get out of here. <sighs> and they're kind of shaking. You know, <laughs> if we don't get out of here, we're not going to survive this. You know? It really is. Yeah, the fiesta is something um, which takes stamina, too. And a lot of mm -hmm. people, you know, after they finish, they say, okay, now I've got to do two weeks in rehab. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So there's it's that, true. you know, there, there's that quality uh, to it too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I, when I was still drinking, trying to get through those, those eight full days of partying was, uh, was definitely a testing of the, the endurance for sure. Mm -hmm. You almost got to escape. You almost got to go to like San Sebastian for like a, a, a couple of days and, and lay on the beach and, and recover and then come back, you know? Yes, that is definitely an aspect of it. Um, I wanted to ask you, how long did it take you to write that book? Uh, you know, and I, I was writing it as I was doing, as I was experiencing it, because I was, I was covering it for the Chicago Tribune and also. Oh, yeah, like that's a, right. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that. God. So I was kind of like, I was kind of, I kind of got a good first draft of it um, done uh, while I was living it. And that helped a lot when it came time to rewrite, because it's hard to remember all the crazy little things that happened, you know, and, um, you know, the, the, it was, it, it was a, it was a long journey. Uh, I had it, you know had a lot of rewrites, uh, rewrote with Jerry, um, a tortoise, um, you know, worked with uh, Jerome Ludwig, uh, editing um, all, as well, you know, Jerry also edited. And uh, so, I mean, it was just a, it was just a process, you know, getting it into shape and, and, and finalizing it. How many um, rewrites did you do on it? I don't know, it's hard to say, maybe 10 or, or more, I'd say. How many words did it have altogether? I think it came in around eighty thousand. I'm not really sure. Eighty thousand. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go back and look. It's a little shorter than uh, you know, than the, than the ninety thousand. It's laid out big, so it's it run. It's running uh around three hundred something. Oh no, four four twenty, four twenty ish pages. But uh, but it's really not that that many words. Mm -hmm. No, no, it reads quite easily. 
Absolutely. You know, John, I was thinking, do, do you want to, can we hear a little bit from the book? I, I might, I might read a little passage. Is that all right? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so for me, you know, the book sort of the sweetest, like, and most like uh, meaningful kind of, kind of moments for the book, uh, where, uh, they weren't, you know, running Pamplona or, or the Gorian or all these things that they're really these like uh, these little precious moments with uh, with the people, um, you know, whether it be like the elderly people who are watching around or the little kids or the teenagers running with me um, or, uh, you know, just the towns themselves, like the little beautiful little pueblos like Spain is just full of, of, of incredibly beautiful pueblos, little towns. So uh, I just want to read a little passage from, from one, uh, it's called uh, Puente La Reina, which is real close to Pamplona. All right, All right so uh, it's chapter seven. My friend Graham Galloway writes me an email. Don't miss Puente La Reina, it's a fantastic run. It's home to, to the most dangerous bar in the world. I look it up and sure enough, Puente La Reina is scheduled for the next day. It's a little village of 3,000 people just outside of Pamplona. It literally means the Queen's Bridge and is named that because Queen Munyadana, uh, the Queen of Pamplona, built a, a beautiful six arch stone bridge in the town in the 11th century. The town and bridge are an important point in the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage route. My bus soars into the electric light of a long concrete tunnel with three deep green peaks of the Pyrene Pyrenees looming above. I jump off the bus and gallop into the main square, then trot through the corridor of an arch overhang that runs beside a temporary red bull square full of sand with wood bleachers surrounding it. The corridor empties onto a street full of partiers. Some barricades and a swinging metal fence sit near the intersection of, of the square. Is this the bull run course? I ask a drunken guy dressed up as a pirate with a patch over his eye. Yeah, yeah, but it's only vaquillas. He slurs and motions down the long, narrow street. What do we do with a drunken sailor? Ask him advice about an extremely dangerous activity. I head out into the narrow cobblestone street that slopes slowly downward, slipping through the boisterous partiers as the falling sun lights up the old facades on the 200 yard straightaway in a golden sheen. Man, this is a sweet little Pueblo. I pass many open doors of bars and homes Metal barricades with vertical bars stand in front of the doors so people can squeeze through, but the vodka can't. Fuck, are they gonna, are they gonna keep the bars open during a run? I remember a, a video Graham made years back where he ordered a gin and tonic, then walked through some vertical bars and crossed the street holding it as several vodka thundered past him. He giggled at the camera. This is the most dangerous bar in the world, he said in his regal Scottish brogue. Trying to get a feel for things, I walk all the way down, uh, down to a turn in the path at the base of the Queen's Bridge. The pretty bridge soars up in a big arc. Man, what if the course didn't turn and the vaquilla went over the bridge? Imaginary vaquilla gallop up the narrow path. I examine the sturdy stone blocks. I bet the Queen's Bridge could handle it. I go around the corner and see the pens and hear the vaca banging the doors with their small horns. I make little calls like a bull. The banging stops. And then one of the vaquilla lets out a faint call. I giggle. She must think I'm a suelto. On the way back to the bull square, the locals drag handmade chest high square wooden shields out of the bars and clubhouses and homes that open onto the course. Four or five wooden grips stick out of the top of the shields and, and the bottoms lay flat on the cobblestones. Old women and children stand behind these shields and hold them up, peering down the street where the vodka will come from any minute. Are they gonna stand behind those things when the vodka come? Navarra is a fucking wonderful place. Bill, somebody shouts happily. I look and Itor Estragi sits on a high window ledge with a big smile on his face. Are those old ladies gonna stand behind those shields during the NCRO? I point at the two old fat women in flower pattern dresses, gripping the plastic, gripping plastic cups of sangria and holding the purple shield with their free hands. I think so. He nods and giggles. Incredible, I shake my head at them. You gonna run? He, he squints. It's ugly to run with the vodka. This is for the little boys. 
I shrugged. I don't care. I'm going to run, man. <laughs> I totally laughed. An older man in a nearby doorway sings a raunchy hota with, big, with a big, deep, and powerful voice as men with weathered faces crowd around him and laugh at the lyrics. Three young teenage boys walk the center of the street nervously. Two look Basque, the, the third looks of Indian descent. They pass a green bottle of beer between them. The Indian kid seems to be working himself up to run. Well, grab your balls, guys. Suddenly, six black vaquillas shoot around the corner near the Queens Bridge and gallop our way down the center of the street. The party, the partiers hurry behind the shields and squeeze through the metal barricades in front of the open doorways. The three nervous little boys position themselves in the center of the street and bounce on their toes, watching the horns of the vaca charging toward them. As the vaca close in, they run. The Indian kid runs closest, whipping his head around, watching the vaca and, sh and shouting to his friends. They're trying so hard, they're so damn brave. I wait, and as the boys pass me, the gap between them and the vodka opens. I can't help it. I, di I dip in between the boys and the vodka and lead the vodka for a while, then cut out. Aitor walks up, shaking his head at me and rolling his eyes. What? Come on. It's my only chance to run here. It's for the kids, Aitor sighs. We head over and watch the vodka in the bull square with the recordadores. I pat Aitor on the back. That must, be what, that must be what it feels like to be eye toward running bulls in Pamplona. The five foot gap between the rest of the runners and the horns of the bulls must seem like a square mile to you. He probably thinks, look at those guys trying so hard to run good. Let me show them how it's done. Eye toward rests his arms on the, show, on the wooden bull ring wall, watching finally as the vodka tears around the ring. We watch the bull dodges and sight the vodka and char to charge, cutting half circles as the animals approach. Then they narrowly evade the vodka, arcing their backs over the heads of the animals as the vodka gouge at them with their twisted horns. I run with the boys on and off for an hour. It's like a tiny paradise. The three young boys striving all out, getting closer and closer, falling and picking each other up with eye toward grinning and watching from a window ledge high above like a ghost of their future peering down into the ghost of his past before it all exploded for him on Estafeta like a great dawn of a new era in the Encierro. And me hiding behind the wooden shields with the old ladies and children, then dashing out and stealing tiny sips of this great stream of ancient humanity, always just past my grasp, but my thirst always growing as if there was an endless void in my soul for this foreign world, so familiar, this great escape of my life that sends me deep into my origins, my original identity. Then the mood shifts. The Indian boy struggles so fiercely to run close and lead the vodka. His eyes and face strain as if he's drowning in a raging rapids. He directs his friends who support him. They approach me. I cut in behind him again. This time he slows to equal me. This little guy has steel balls. And we run shoulder to shoulder leading the vodka, grinning at him. I grin at him and pat him on the back. Good work, kid. He glances at me urgently, then looks back at the horns of the vodka bobbing close behind us. He wants it so bad. Let him have it. I peel off as, as he takes the vodka up and around the bend into the ring, his small swift body melding into the rambling black vaquilla. I grab my bag and take off for Pamplona with one last glance back at the three boys working the vodka up the street. It's like it means the whole damn world to them. I turn and walk through the stone corridor I hope it does, guys. Keep at it. And I'll see you in San Fermin in a few years. <laughs> Thanks. Well, um, I don't know, Bill. Is there anything you want to ask me? Or Yeah, yeah. We don't really have that much time left. I think we got to do some questions here, I think. Uh, but briefly, if there's anything. Yeah, can, can I ask you? So, so I was I was thinking there's a lot of similarities between uh, between kind of second, uh, Lady Brett and uh, and 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 sort of uh, the, the the main the female lead in the in in, in Bacchanalia. Um, it's is that it's Iruna? Is that how you say her name? Uh, Irina. 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 And so, was there any uh, was there any connection where you, did you have Lady Brett in mind at all in in in, in creating her character? Well. In part, I mean, in the sense that she is, uh, 
a very strong woman, okay, in, in my book. And at the same time, I think that at the end, well, I, I can't really sort of tell people what happens at the end of the book there, but there are similarities, definitely. One is an aristocrat, though, in my grandfather's book, whereas in my book, no, she isn't. She's just someone from uh, St. Petersburg or Moscow. I can't remember which town it was, one of the two capitals. And uh, they're both very beautiful, very sought after, so to speak. And uh, that hasn't changed from the mm -hmm. 1920s to uh, the new century. Um, yeah, I would say there are, there are many similarities, uh, which, well, okay, is what I intended, <laughs> but not that much in a sense. It's, uh, this is a very modern book, okay? This is a very modern book about a fiesta, which is very old and has a lot of its own sort of ancient rhythms to it. And the people who go there fall into these rhythms in many ways, and they add to it, and they become a part of that. Yeah. As they say in, in Pamplona, la fiesta está por la calle, you know, the party is in the streets, and you're making it. You're making history every time you go there. So this is what I wanted to express in that. And this Russian woman, even though she has nothing to do with Spain, she's going there for the first time, becomes a part of it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it, it's interesting, and you know, she has like, I, I guess the, the thing that, that made me think the most about Lady Britt was that in the way that she, um, she's so sexually sort of like liberated, she's so like, she, she kind of seems to hold all the power sexually um, mm -hmm. over the men in that, in that same kind of way that Lady Britt uh, does in, in The Sun Also Rises. It's like- Oh, a, absolutely. I mean, uh, what was it uh, my grandfather said about Fiesta? Uh, it's, uh, something about being uh, naughty or something like that, you know? No, I can't even remember that quote, but basically you go there and the fiesta takes over, mm -hmm. you know? And it's funny because when you wake up from it, so to speak, in the morning after it's over and you're looking around you and you see this quiet town, you know, Pamplona, and you're wondering, my God, it's civilization. Because you're outside of that, you know, you're in this sort of bubble of energy and excess and joy and rivalries and uh, sexuality on uh, hyperdrive, basically, you know. Mm -hmm. And while there have been sort of incidents, you know, uh, there was a gang rape a couple of years back, which made the news and everything. I am absolutely amazed at the, the lack of these sort of incidents in general and the lack of violence there too. Mm -hmm. It'd be hard, yeah, be hard for us to think of an American that. thing that would be as, you know, well behaved while misbehaving, you know? Right, right. There's there, there's a certain kind of like logic and like uh, like order and rules. Like the one of the main rules I think in Fiesta is you, you are not allowed to get mad. If you yeah. get mad, you have broken the rules. And you will be shunned for that. But as yeah, long as yeah. you like calm down, they, they'll let you back into the party. That's it. That's it. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should open up now for questions or okay. anyone else has it. Looks like Andrew has a question if you'd like to unmute. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again uh, very much, both of you. Um, like I said earlier, can't wait to read your book, Bill. John, your, your book, Bacchanalia, fantastic. I recommend it for everyone. Uh, I got a question for each of you. Uh, first question towards Bill is, you mentioned at the start that your first fiesta was in 2005. And I'm just curious, in what year would you say that the Basque and Spanish runners began to take you seriously as a runner yourself, as a motel, kind of like ingratiating yourself into the culture? And then after that, maybe, uh, John, if you can just kind of speak to you know, obviously you have this big legacy of your grandfather kind of looming over you uh, in Pamplona. How have you kind of found your own way in town and kind of made the fiesta your own despite this overwhelming legacy of your grandfather? So I don't know, if maybe Bill, then John. Okay, uh, great. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, 
I think it started, I was running with this, uh, I, I was just starting to get, have successful runs, you know, that's where you're able to run and, and lead the bulls up the street and, and, and be in a, like in a position where the bulls, you're really communing with the bull. And uh, I was just starting to get there. And, um, and I had a run with a guy that was, that was a regular, he still runs really good. Um, his name's Juan. Um, and, uh, you know, we just had a great run into the arena and, uh, and that was a, that was a really special moment, but, um, I think uh, I think the moment that it really happened was probably in 2000 and um, probably in 2012 when um, I was running and and I, I was running in front of the bulls, I running in front of in front of the horns of one 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 horn of one bull and and one page lake horn was running in front of the other, and we're running and 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 uh, I started to, like trip on people who were on my left side, and as I started to fall, Juan Pei reached out and grabbed my elbow and caught me and kept me up and we kept running. And uh, that was that was probably the moment where I realized like, wow, like, like I'm in it with these guys. This guy just saved me from major injury, you know? And, 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 and uh, you know, I think, uh, I think that was a big, a big moment in 2012. I mean, there was very small micro moments that led up to the, to the bigger moments, but uh, it, it was about that, you know, it was about them seeing me out there running and, 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 and trying and, and learning and getting better and, um, and also trying to help people when they were in, in trouble and things like that. And I think that's when it, as it started to really happen, as I got better at running, really. Um, yes, to answer your question, Ander. Um, I think for me, it's always been about friendship. Um, San Fermin, that's the thing that, uh, so-called sort of saves me, you, know, you could say saves me from, you know, the, uh, the, the earnest obsession, because it is one of those places along with say Key West uh, that is obsessed or even Havana, uh, which is obsessed with uh, my grandfather and his legacy and his work and everything. Many times I would go there and people wouldn't know who I was except for my friends, you know, or those, you know, in Pamplona Posse, you know, uh, uh, Graham's group there. And for the most part, they wouldn't care. You know, they were just having too much fun themselves in the fiesta. Then there are those who go there specifically for Ernest. And of course, if they ever found out that I was there, then I probably would not be able to sort of get rid of them, you know, but um, that I understand too. I mean, he was a great writer and, uh, all of this, in, well, no, I wouldn't say all of this, but a good part of it. I know uh, the the fiesta was important even before he discovered it or you know wrote that book. Uh, even in the 1800s, all over Europe, people were going to it. And uh, I read a book recently uh, by a Pamplona writer. Um, wrote the foreword for him, and uh, I was amazed to discover that in fact it wasn't some sort of small in Seattle like Bill describes in his book that uh, Gertrude Stein sent er uh, Ernest to see and he discovered it for North America. No, no, no. They've been going there for, for decades, literally, you know. Pretty soon as, you know, mass tourism uh, was invented, they were sending people down there to Pamplona to see the, uh, the running of the bulls and the corrida and the drinking and everything. So it's, uh, Pamplona has its own spirit, its own life. It isn't just my grandfather. A lot of it is, but it's got its own vibe, definitely. Bobby George, you had your hand up. Do you have a question? Um, yes, ma'am. Um, th thank you both for uh, this has been really neat. Uh, Bill, my questions for you. Um, in the passage you just read, which was great, uh, you talked about the, the young boys and uh, kind of letting them have the vacas, and um, in that spirit, I was wondering if you um, have any advice for bull runners and what you would say to uh, people who want to begin uh, bull running or improve their bull running, uh, given all, all your experience in it. You know, I, I think I think I've always made the most gains in my running um, by uh, by observing the great Spanish runners. You know, and and that's kind of like what you know. Uh, Andrew and I do with the podcast. Um, it's a, it's a great way to uh, to to point out the runners that is that are running successfully and how they're doing it. 
um, because that's really how you learn um, to, to, to succeed in the run. Um, you know, I mainly focused in on Juan Pedro Lecon when I was coming up. Um, and, um, you know, I, I watched him, I, I focused on him and, and, you know, he felt like he was my main focus and guru as a runner. Um, then there's also, you know, David Rodriguez in those like, in those like mid to late, like 2000 years, you know, first decade of the, of the century. It's just, um, those two guys were the two greats for me. And, uh, so watching them, you know, and, and observing them closely and, and just, being inspired by them, you know, you got to be really inspired to do this uh, because everything in the world is, is, is telling you no, like escape, get safe, don't do this. Everything is telling you no, so you got to be hyper, hyper uh, motivated and, and inspired to, to follow through uh, and, and focus on um, in, in the midst of all that chaos. So, yeah, I mean, it would, it would just be, it would just be focusing on the best runners. So right now, I mean, you know, there's, you know, still one pay and David Rodriguez is still great. Um, but we're coming into an era of uh, where uh, where Aitor Stregi is, is is it's his sort of it's his time, and um, you can learn a tremendous amount watching Aitor Stregi run right now. Um, it's it's incredible uh, the things that he does. Um, I don't think that anybody's ever going to be able to do what he does at this in this at this time, you know. But to do one tenth of what he what he does would be amazing, you know. So seek out uh, the 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 best the best runners and watch tape on them get inspired um, and, and, you know, run the center of the street. You know, that's the biggest thing. If you're in the center of the street, things can happen. If you're off to the side, it's, it's going to be difficult to get in. Well, I guess if there are no more questions, um, I'd like to say thanks to everyone for coming. Gary, did you have a question? I see your hand. Yeah, I was going to ask Bill. I, I mean, obviously, I spent a lot of time with you on this. Um, how much longer do you think you can do this? Like, I'm, I'm always. I mean, I, 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 I feel like an old man sometimes. I'm 43. You know, I, it's different mornings, my knees give me more trouble. You know. Um, yeah, I'm always. I'm just always curious by that notion of just how long you can keep your body doing something that you enjoy like that. I don't know. I mean, I hope to run into my 80s if I can. I mean, I'm not going to probably. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 there's the best runner right now that's like older is probably El Boti. He's a he's a, a runner. He runs the beginning of the course. He's this tiny little guy with a shaved head, and he 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 has this system of running. He's he's amazing. He's from Navarra, and um, I think he's I think he's 60. I think he's he's in his 60s now. Um, so. You know, El Boti, uh, if, if I could do what El Boti did and, and get another, you know, 20 years of running in, uh, I would be thrilled. I would be so happy about that. But uh, at the same time, you know, I don't want to be one of those guys that hangs on too long and is sitting out there when they're not capable of running and, and they're causing, you know, they, they're potential hazards for the other runners. Um, so I don't, I, I will step away when my body does not permit it anymore <laughs> for sure but hopefully 20 years that's my that's my goal well i don't know if you'll be able to handle that bill considering the kind of injuries you managed to sort of rack up even in you know a rather quiet summer <laughs> such as the one that you describe in your book <laughs> That's true. My body will probably not hold up for 20 years. I think, I think you're going to need to become the bionic man, you know, they're going to start. And, you know, we're making tremendous progress and, you know, and, uh, you know, how to say it, uh, micro implants and things like that. Right. Uh, look at the vaccines, for instance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know, Julian Medina had, had suffered some, some very serious injuries and he had, you know, various, various like massive injuries. And he, he started to kind of like, he started to have wear like all this like kind of like padding and stuff towards the end of his running. And he kind of ran a little bit. He was running, he used to be like a like a rocket, like 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 I tried straight, a, a rocket. And and but when he got up towards the 60s, he started to run more mechanically and a little slower, but he's still amazing. It was like the stuff he did in his last few years running was phenomenal. But uh I, I could see myself becoming a little more robotic as as, as I get towards the end of my career. <laughs> Well, it could be, you know, a bit like the uh, 
the uh, the World Economic Forum, where we're going to be joining, you know, your physical and your digital and your biological et, you know, essences all together in the bull run. Okay. There we go. Yeah, just just have like a like a hologram of me running bulls. That, that, that's exactly. Yeah. It'd be Bill's AI. Okay. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'd be super brave there. I'd run the horns every day. <laughs> Well, uh, thanks, guys. I was. Oh, you have a question? If you have a question, I'm sorry, Andrew. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I know we're, we're wrapping up. Just one really quick question. Oh, sure. So, Go ahead. Bill, you, you know, one of the things that I think probably gets lost for a lot of people, and I'm sure you cover it in your book at some point, but it's getting from town to town in Spain. Oftentimes, they're not very close together. You have to rent a car to go from point A to point B. Can you just talk a little bit about how you manage the logistics? You know, who drove who? Who carpooled with who? How did you manage yeah. that? various means of, of transportation i would say uh you know i rented a lot of cars and let me tell you i drive like all the rental cars in spain are stick and i'm horrible at it so i destroyed like probably 20 vehicles <laughs> in the course of this this summer um but uh no like you know uh i tour and his friends um you know they took me to several of the runs um you know uh Juan Pei took me a few places um um uh, you know Diango, Diango from Cuellar, my dear friend who helped me throughout this whole, um, this whole, this whole trip and voyage and the whole book launch uh, in Spain. Uh, Diango from, from Cuellar, a great friend of mine and a great supporter. He drove me to a bunch of places. Uh, Craig Stables, who I actually kind of like be, got, got, became friends with that summer, who's also from Cuellar, he brought me to a bunch of them. Um, so, you know, I would basically, I would try to set up in like uh, cities that were central, I had like friends. Oh no, various other people helped me too, especially during Iskar. Um, a lot of guys helped me. Oh man, I'm not forgetting all the names. Um, but uh, a lot of the Quayar guys were helping me get to Iskar because we would go back and forth all day because they had runs all day, like 24 hours a day. So you would go, you'd sleep for four hours, then go back and run again. And all of these guys, I wish now I feel bad because I'm forgetting everybody's name. But um, but yeah, so it was it was it was a it was like a. It was just a mixture of all kinds of things. You know, I took trains to places. I, I, I sometimes I got a hostel, like in Tudela, I got a hostel right next to the bull ring. So I was able to just walk to the to the uh, run, but then I had to go to other towns. I would take the train. Sometimes other guys would drive me. Um, Raul La Sierra drove me one time to uh, a few places. Uh, so many of these these guys, you know, that, that was like the wonderful surprise of it all was that people were just, that I barely knew, I would be, become quick friends with them. And they would offer to take me places and they would bring me to different runs. They would drive me there, drive me back, drive me all over. And, and like, you know, I was just marveling at the generosity of the bull runners, you know, because and it was really just they just wanted to share their passion for their culture with me. And, and, and you know, they 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 liked that I was doing this, you know, and they wanted to be part of it and, and, and help, you know. And, um, you know, I'm very grateful to all of them. I, I try to write passionately about all of them. And, 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 and I, hope, uh, I hope I do justice to, to, to the kind of generosity and kindness that they gave me, you know. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I would literally, one time I got lost. <laughs> this is hilarious. I was driving to, to Falsus and I got lost because my GPS would go bonkers for some reason when I was sometimes. And I'd have like, I'd, be, I'd run into, I was running into fire. I had a real good run. I was like, oh, I'm so excited and everything. And then I jump in the car, try to go to Faust's. Well, on the way there, it takes me off on, on like another route. And I end up on a dirt road with like a brand new rental car. And I'm like going up like bumps and everything. I'm like, I, I see like a construction worker. And he just like turns and looks at me. He's like, what are you doing here? You're like, you're not supposed to be here. Like, go, what are you doing here with a rental car? And like, I, like I'm, I'm driving and I get to the town, I get to, to Faust's. And I literally have, I'm literally like two minutes late. And, uh, and I think the run's over, but luckily I get out of the car and the run's not over. So I start running towards the course and it's like, it's like two blocks down and these old ladies on a balcony, they see me coming. They're like, oh, oh, look, look, look. And they start cheering for me to get to the course before the, and the rocket goes off and I'm still not on the course. And I finally run to the fence, climb in and, and finally I'm on. And like, I can just start to see the Vakia coming down the top of the cliff. And I, and I run up the course, but I try to run, but you know, it was too late. I was too disoriented. I ran, ran horribly that day, but I did run. So I, I'm a, I, you know, I, oh, and the, and the whole time those ladies were cheering for me. They were, they were so happy I made it to the course. They were, they were laughing. They were just laughing at me so bad. It was ridiculous. But uh, another time I was invited to lead. And so 
so one advice set of advice if anyone wants to go run the via the lead circuit that's a place where you can run hundreds of runs in, in like a week and and what you do is what i would suggest is is go and um there's, there's a youth hostel that they call, uh, they, they don't call them hostels. Hostels in, in Spain are actually uh, just like motels. And they have another thing called like an albergue juvenil. That's a youth hostel and that's really cheap. And you can, you can, uh, you can totally afford like a, a, a week, two week stay there for like, it'd be like a hundred euros or something, maybe 150 at the most. And so I, you, you can stay at this, this, this uh, albergue juvenil at, in, um, in Medina del Campo, which is right in the center of it all, and just rent a car, and you can you can literally run unbelievable amount of bull runs in a day. I ran 27 one night, and uh, it, it was it was crazy. I mean, I would just and like there was a group of runners from the area, like young guys that were going to every town too, and like you know I was just going, I was basically just following them, and I would see them again, and we would like cross paths, then we wouldn't at the next, and then we cross paths again because there's there's so many runs in one night in in uh, in Vital Lead. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, so yeah. So I remember one night, one night, I I I, I pull up to, to this town. I don't I don't remember the name of it, um, but uh, I pull up to the town and um, I park illegally in front of a cop and I jump out and I run to the course because I can hear the run happening and I jump on the course and I see this like fifteen year old uh, pastore and I say, "How many bulls? Are, what is it? Bulls? Vakia? What what's it? What is it?" And he goes. He goes, says Vakia. And I said, oh, okay. And I turn and they come flying out, out, of, the, out of the bull ring at me. And I start running with them. And like, I hadn't eaten that whole night. And uh, we, they, they were running them back and forth to different pens, like, and giving them like 10 minute breaks. And uh, at one point I go and I get a, um, I get a sandwich. I get like a gyro sandwich. Uh, they call them like a kebab sandwich. So I get the kebab sandwich. I'm trying to eat. And uh, all of a sudden they cut the vakia come again. So I start running with the vakia with the sandwich. And I take a bite of the sandwich. I'm running and I cut out. And like that time was amazing because it was like two in the morning, right? And it was total crazy fun on the town. Like there were like little babies on the balconies dancing, like waiting for the bulls and cheering for the bulls. And there was like old men who would like come out onto the, the course, like smoking a cigar and like prove how, how brave they are, like standing in the street, you know? Like, and, like, and, then, and then like the teenagers, they were running. They were like around 15 or, you know, a little older or younger than 15. And um, they would, we would run, we'd be running, you know, and like they started getting, looking at me and being like, oh, I'm a, I'm, you come in my town and run in my town? I'm going to show you how to run. So they start running like crazy close. Like the Vakir literally got their face on the guy's back and, and he's running like this. And I'm like, okay, okay, go for it, man. Good for you. You know, and I cut out. And like in between the, the runs, they would be these young, like group of like 20 or 30, like 15 year olds runners they would go and like make out with their girlfriends for like 10 minutes and then they would come back and they're like, really beautiful girlfriends too and then they would come back and run again and like we did that all night but uh but yeah i mean that that that's kind of like the chaos of of uh running in um in these little towns i mean it, it, it's so much fun and it's such a great spirit and it's uh it's outrageous i mean it's it, it's outrageous that this this all this exists and we, most people don't really know, you know, most people just think it's this one time event. Like, we, you know, what we talked about at the beginning with John, this one day, one time event, that's a tourist trap that, 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 that Americans really think that's what it is. And in no, reality, it's not a tourist trap at all, the way Bill describes it. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a whole nother universe out there. Exactly. Yeah. But I mean, like the, the, the general idea of it you get from a, an average American is they think that it's like just this like tourist trap thing, like, you know, like the silly thing, you know, it's, it's just not that it's, it's so complicated. So you know what it is, you go into that and then you're really getting into the real Spain. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You know, you've, you've left the tourist traps behind and exactly. you've taken that first step into the great unknown, you know, Exactly, exactly. And it, it, it's and, and the great thing about it is, you know, they're very welcoming, you know, and they're and they're, you know, you get these special little moments, you know, with people and, and these little interactions, these little impressions of of like an unguarded Spain, you know, um, where there's no cameras around, you know, there's no like there's no there, this isn't San Fermin where the replays are gonna be be broadcast all day on on TVE, you know. This is this is just locals enjoying their their culture directly in front of their house. You know, it, it, it is, it's wonderful. And when they find out you're from somewhere else, they're really excited. They're like, oh, you came all the way here to my fiesta. That's really, that's sweet. That's great. Well, let's run together. Go on. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful.
Well, that, thank you guys. I was, we could go on for another hour talking about this. Those are amazing stories, Bill. And, and John, you were fantastic in conversation that um, I know you're a little nervous about it or what to talk about, but it was, you were perfect. So thank you so much. And thanks for everyone for showing up uh, to the event. Um, we really appreciate it. You can still purchase the books, go to exile and bookbill.com. We'll be happy to get a copy too if you don't have one or buy one yep. for, buy ton, 10 of them for the holidays or right around the corner. So um, thank yep. you, Jerry. For making for making this happen thanks for getting in touch with me and uh my pleasure everyone have a great night uh and thanks again thank you i was wonderful. thank you I really appreciate it all right all right